I'm going to talk about five ways people might use toxic behavior in arguments to stop from taking accountability, to deflect and project the blame back onto you, and to get away with things. My name is Lise Colucci and I'm here to help you understand and heal from toxic relationships in your life, to understand narcissism and how to transform your life after narcissistic relationships. We know that narcissists don't like to take accountability. We know that they won't take accountability and that they can't really make change in that because they don't have the empathy it takes to put themselves in the position of the other person and relate to others. They are relating through their ego, which says me, 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 and only me, right? And they're trying to get their way. They're trying to deflect. They're trying to point the finger, whatever they're trying to do here. It is toxic. So one thing they might do in an argument is minimize your feelings, your distress, or your concern. They might say things like, why are you overreacting? What's the matter here? Why, why is, what's the problem? Why is there a problem? Why are you so sensitive? You are upset about the most petty thing. Why do you get upset about such small things? Those are the kinds of things that they might say to you when they are dismissing and minimizing the issue. Another thing they might do here is slow down. So they might come in hot, right? And then slow down and soften their speech so that by the time they've done all this minimizing and talking to you in a harsh way or talking to you in an accusatory way, then they're slow and calm. By then, you're escalated, you're yelling, you're upset, you're reacting, whatever it is you do, you're shutting down, and therefore they can become the victim or they can flip the script and make you the perpetrator of this argument. And usually with a covert narcissist is another way of minimizing and diverting so that the topic is never talked about. Another thing they do is they blame shift. They will point the finger back at you. If you were not so whatever, I wouldn't have had to whatever, right? Well, the only reason I did that is because you did this. Well, I know you just don't like who I am as a person. These are the kinds of things they'll say to shift the blame back to you. They do something wrong, you don't like who they are as a person. Another thing that they will do, the infamous gaslighting, trying to make you disbelieve your reality, to not see what happened as actually what happened, and then shift the reality to whatever they are saying happened, happened, right? So they say things like, I never said that. That's not how it was. What are you talking about? They will even pretend that they don't remember things in the conversation that happened three minutes earlier, right? To sort of gaslight you that it never it was never said it was it never happened they will do things like say well that proves nothing wait no actually it proves everything another form of gaslighting could be where they completely change the topic and change the subject bringing up the past or whatever so that you're talking about one thing when you thought you were talking about something else and then they mix the two together which makes it really confusing into word salad and so we'll talk about that in a second another thing that they do yelling name calling ridiculing so that you get flustered you get reactive you get angry see here's part of the game in an art in, in an argument with a narcissist because for them it's game to get you elevated and get you escalating the, your behavior to make you reactive so that they can push the blame back onto you for being reactive, make the whole argument about how reactive you are and how angry and how much you yell and how you are mad at them all the time and blah, 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 instead of the thing you were upset about in the first place. Once they've got you reactive, the initial topic's over. And now it's all about how you are angry, yelling, whatever, whatever it is they choose to belittle with you with or to ridicule you with. And then finally, that I'm going to talk about today, at least, is dismissal and deflection. Kind of touched on that a little with the gaslighting, but dismissal of, of conversation with word salad. You just start talking about things that are unrelated, but slightly related and sort of related, and then it doesn't really make any sense, but you're saying lots of words, and then they're then they're just talking about this, that, and the other while they are also telling you how bad you are, while they're telling you how wrong you are, and how could you be that way, and why do why do you see you don't like me anyway? They throw all the all of it together into a giant 
salad, right? And throw it at you so that you're lost in the conversation. Dismissal and deflection can also be bringing up past arguments. So you're discussing something, it turns into an argument, they start gaslighting you and then they, then they throw in a past argument. Well, now the topic's two things. And so you're toggling in your brain both things. That, no, no, wait, I want to talk about what we were talking about. I don't want to talk about the last time this happened or the last time that happened. I want to talk about what we were talking about to begin with. And they say, see, you always do that. Here's one thing, you always, you always do this. You always do that. Not healthy in relationship. Again, my name is Lise Colucci and hit the thumbs up. Okay, and they'll guilt trip you. That that is one way that they deflect and dismiss. This is really common with narcissistic parents, especially narcissistic mothers. I do so much for you and look what I get. After everything I've done for you, this is how you're gonna treat me. This is how you're gonna talk to me. I am your whatever and you treat me like this. You know, I have loved you your whole life and this is what the thanks I get. This is what happens. So you see, they use these guilt trips to avoid whatever it is that you're upset with them about or you're trying to discuss with them that maybe you're not even upset, you're just trying to discuss, right? Anything that catches them in something they don't want to reveal about themselves. And then and the last thing I'm going to talk about today is projecting. Projecting to point the finger at you for the very thing that it is that they are doing. So they're trying to force you to take the blame, point the finger at you, or things they've done that you're not talking about, but you know that they do, point the finger at you. They may even say you're gaslighting me. They may even say you're projecting. <laughs> There's all kinds of things they'll do, which are kind of ridiculous, but they do them in order to avoid and taking any accountability in anything in life. So when dealing with a person who argues in any of these ways, the best solution is gray rock. The best solution is to not engage in it. And if they are truly toxic and you'd bring it up later and say, hey, that was a bad argument. We went into this dark place and, and, and they can't find a place of accountability and they can't find a place of discussion that leads to action, not just accountability of, yeah, you're right, because a lot of covert narcissists will do that. But yeah, you're right. Ooh, I need to make some changes here. And then you see action toward change. If you do not see that, you're probably dealing with someone so toxic that they can't make change. And therefore, gray rocket, get away from it, whatever you need to do to make your life healthy, but certainly don't engage with it. If you need coaching, group coaching, or peer support, check out the information in the description of every video. These argument tactics are about winning. Real relationship discussion and argument and debate is about finding commonality, hearing each other's point of view, and repairing any anything that needs to be repaired within the relationship or changed within the relationship. It's about compromise. It's about coming together in an and a heightened upset state to find resolution. When you have any, any of these tactics going on, they are not about resolution. They're about winning so that they do not have to take accountability and they do not have to make change or do any of the emotional work that it takes to have a real relationship with another human being. Hit subscribe and I will see you guys next time. Take care, bye-bye.